Aboriginal homeland and sacred to its people. On the southeast border is the remote township of Nooka. During the wet season, all road access to the town is cut off by the swell of the mighty Roper River. The nearest city, Darwin, is a mere 700 kilometres up the road. Ten minutes away from 11 here on Nooka Radio with Robbie Beckett. I'll be with you for the next hour or so playing your kind of music, Aboriginal music of course, here in the best part of South East Arnhem Land. So don't you go away, stay here right here. My name is Maria, I'm from Mokka, I'm Tipping his head. Of course, taking you through to 11 o'clock this morning, and coming up at 11 o'clock, we do have the news, which is great. Uh, and we're just starting off back here again at Ropa, back on air again, which is really good for the community. At the moment in the community, it's, it's, it's a little bit hard, and this is when it comes hard for a lot of people because you got you got ceremony like you know people dying and stuff like that. It's hard to do anything. There are things happening in in the, in the communities, and there's been a lot of um, people passing away lately. Like every week or every fortnight, we have um, funerals for families, you know. And sometimes, most of the families that we um, that that have died, um, the doctors don't even know what happened to them, you know. Oh, um, what's the cause of their death or anything like that. But today was a very good day because we got talk black on, on the radio, first time that talk black's going on. Um, talk black is a, is a program for indigenous people with problems all around Australia. It's a national program. We've got all these little radio stations and they're on the local. We need that national link up. 
so we can get our word across to the to the world and to around Australia, so we can start educating people on how we live our life and how we are. <laughs> We have a clinic here. Um, we any serious problems there? Medivac from here. There's a few extensions I reckon we need on this clinic. Like there's a lot of uh, people that are on dialysis and things like that. Um, need to change a eh? blood things like that. We haven't got those facilities here for them. They've got to go to Darwin or Catherine. If, if they get sick here, well, you have to get um, be treated by with a, a Panadol or something or a tablet or I'm not pretty sure what kind of medicine and <laughs> a sleeping pill or something. <laughs> they have to fly a long, long way away when you get really sick. Hey, um, my name is Conrad anyway. Uh, Conrad Hall. Uh, I just came here just to work here and I've been here for six months now. My family's like, they come down to visit us and they'll come maybe stay here for a couple of days, you know. And maybe after that I'll head back out again. I'll just come down maybe with a funeral or something like that. And like, if there's no room in the, like, in the house, they'll just leave out in the kitchen or a back brander or something like that. Yeah. kids and they're married, but they got their own house and their own kids. And grandchildren. And grandchildren. You know, you still want your independence. Um, well, family. Uh, you know, it's really awkward. I tell you, it's not easy. I, mean, I live in a house with ten or so people in it. Um, all my in-laws, a couple of brothers and sisters, and uh, their children. Um, it's, I want my own house. I want independence. <laughs> um, I'm not being. Um, you know, I can't see why not. This is my grandmother's country. Uh, my mother's mother comes from this land, um, and her father and his father, you know, that's, uh, but I'm being very patient, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are suffering, and that's, um, I don't mind, you know, suffering for a little bit. A lot of times it can get pretty messy, and not, you know, not healthy from a lot of families in one house, which we're gonna, it's hard cleaning and all that stuff, you know. 
even though a lot of hands, but still, it'll still get messy and then somebody else will get sick. That's one thing, you got to keep it clean. Clean place, you have no sickness. <laughs> when we went down to Brisbane, they were checking out, um, well, the like, Nothing came out on the result thing, on, on paper, and the result didn't show properly. And she had a big, big spleen and all my um, little, um, my little baby, and yeah, she was bleeding from nose and started coughing, and they didn't know what was wrong with her. And like every day, I would I'd say, "Well, there's another test just came in, and there's nothing um, showed up, you know. So can you send us back home?" And they said, oh, no, we have to wait first. And she had operation here, near, right side. And yeah. Then we went um, went back to Darwin, and then she stayed there for like a couple of days. She passed away. And we came back. And how long was she there? Only four months. <laughs> Hi, my name is Scott. Hey, Dingle. <laughs> my name is Peter Turner. And my name is Karis Dingle. Come close, yeah. Now, where you mob just come from? Mom? What you mob doing? Uh, we just coming from school. What school do you go to? I go to St. John College. And that's in? Darwin. Darwin. And how far is that away from Europa? Uh, 700 kilometers. So why did you, why did you um, decide to go to school in Darwin, not here at Europa? To learn more. Education. I just do a bit of stacking, like stacking the fridge, and I help my friends out like that. And sometimes I watch the kids swimming in the swimming pool, you know, make sure they don't drown or anything like that. Sometimes the little kids start fighting, you know, and they come tell us. And well, me, I don't know what to do. See, I like, I like to go up and growl them and tell them, you know, hey, I wouldn't mind slapping you across the head or tip you behind the ears and stuff like that. But, yeah. I make sure they don't fight, or if they fight here and all that, I'll just tell them, you know, if you're going to keep going fighting, I can kick you out here and make sure you go, don't come back here and all that, you know. Or if you don't, if you don't go to school and you come in here about after three and you didn't go to school, well, you're out, you know, and all that. Yeah. Problems you see when you get home to this community. What sort of problems that really piss you off? You know, fight or sniffing, and some men smoke ganja, piss us off. Yeah. So you you want to grow up and try and do be a be somebody you know, get older. Yeah. And look after Malaya. Yeah. Look after family and the people in the community. Yeah. <laughs> Humbug. We're all families here, and and if say if I if I get lots of money, you know, and if my family my families don't have money, and if I if I've got a hundred a hundred hundred dollars, or maybe just just the fifty dollars. And if they haven't got any money, and they haven't had anything to eat, and we just lend them money, and and we don't usually say like, oh, you, you have to owe me back now because I paid you fifty dollars. It's it's the stack, you know. Once you give, you, you give you give things, you can't take it back. You know? I live in Carlstead. I live in Nuka, and I work as a night patrolman. Job is to 
young people up for speed and try and make it easier for other young people. The problem that I only see is the drinking problem. When last year, a couple of months before, there had been a lot of pet sniffing around here, but now it's all been settled down. I don't, they're not sniffing anymore. And if, if there's a person and there's a fight in the community, my drunks, and it has to be the family, the family from that broken person has to, what's the name, control the argument and problem. Mm -hmm. And if you can't control it, then it's just the police then. I would like to have a house on my own with my sister. She's crippled, she's got five foot here with me. She has to crawl. <laughs> she has to crawl up the steps. Walk for the Leave the wheelchair outside and fall up the stairs. She, when she crawls up and down, she gets get infected. I go get bush medicine and for his soul. It heals her up. But then it comes on again, you know. Comes on again for a couple of weeks. Can you sleep, Lee? I had an accident uh, in Darwin. Went across the road. Yeah, bus, the government bus. And ever since I've been in hospital, and then I came back home. So I have sores, you know. If I start scratching, it's sores everywhere. But I get along alright. everywhere. Uh, good things because now covered. I'm doing some painting too for a little bit of money. I haven't finished it yet. Only a little bit to go now that looks big down there. So you're gonna have pocket money, you see? Three people living there, two, two of my grandson and a little boy. And my daughter sleep there with another little girl. Another little girl sleep here, and I sleep in the room. When they had no and visitors come, we put them in the room, we sleep on the veranda. See, so now we've got all this land around here. Water, fresh water, the springs, things like that, food. You know, I want to live as normal as like the rest of Australia. Um, go fishing on the weekends. Uh, you know, go hunting, whatever. And then I have a house to go home to. Um, we just me and my wife, her family. 
and I know all my other brothers and cousins and all that, they feel the same way. We don't want to live with 20, 30 people in the house. You know, it's not easy. But in a, you know, like we were saying, in amongst all this country out here, we've got good rock and good materials to use and, you know, build our own housing. And, you know, we've got the outstations, we've got all this land, people can be moving, living on their own land, you know, building these communal houses. That's where it'd be perfect, ideal. You know, we've got that much outstation in country out here. Um, we've just got to get more organised. Don't forget too, if you do have any community news or any announcements you wish to have broadcast over the radio, come down and give us a, like, what can you give me, just give me all the information of course, and we'll put it to you on the air. Here's a little track here from The Cruel Sea and uh, Native Rhyme Syndicate, this is together. This place up here, Arnhem Land, gives, gives a lot of people, Aboriginal people in Australia, hope the way it's been kept and maintained for all those years is still the way. I still come back here, the bush is still the same. Maybe the trees have gotten a little bit bigger, some have fallen down and stuff like that, but it's still untouched country. It's one of the things, being living down in Queensland, you know, most of your life, is, you know, and knowing that there's Aboriginal land that's owned by Aboriginal people in this country, Everybody, all the Aboriginal people around where I was from, they sort of envied it and gave them hope, hope of of getting something back for those people in other, other areas. <laughs>
Dobra, mam sumna, sumna.